Morning everybody, AmpReparaGuy.com, 203-892-4119. The current time here is 5.59 a.m. I start really early here, I usually get up about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Have my uh, bowl of cereal and my two cups of coffee and then I get to work. <laughs> I love coffee, it's awesome. But Okay, so I have this SB200 here. Customer sent it in, said it had some issues, so I'm going to go through it and bring it back to life and make it better than new. So, it's had some modifications done, so I'm going to put the Harbach filter board in. I'll check all the solder connections. Something happened here with the meter lamp. Got the housing, meter housing hot and it started to melt. I'll check the meter and make sure it's okay. I'll tighten up these nuts carefully. Remove the outer ones, tight, snug up the inner ones, and then put the other ones back on. I'll put meter protection diodes across it uh, to protect the meter in case there's ever short and the be positive. If this, uh, if the this is a multimeter, uh, measures high voltage, just to be our relative power plate and grid. If it's selected, if you sl if it's on the plate selection, when there's a short, it'll take out the meter if there's no pr uh, protection across it. So I'll do that. I will change the plate blocking capacitor, I will rewind new parasitic suppressors, I'll clean off the fan blades, oil the fan, make sure that is working well. Looks like uh, someone added some goop on the top and the bottom of the plate choke to stop the wire from un um, unraveling, so that's good. I'll clean the dust off, very dusty. I'll clean the dust off the air variables, the air variables look okay, no arc damage. The output rotary switch, band switch looks okay. The other uh, set of contacts um, for the padding capacitance looks okay. I will compress the clips on the sockets and clean them with the oxid gold. Someone added a IBM type receptacle for an IBM cord. I'm probably going to have to change it over to a regular cord for the strain relief. Someone changed the RCA uh, jack on the, uh, these come stock for the uh, the input connection where the transceiver connects. Uh, they come stock with an RCA type jack uh, and they changed it over to an SO239, so that's okay. So I'm going to flip it over and I'll show you the bottom. See, I've done a, I always put them on a rubber mat to protect them when I'm working on something. Okay, I'll okay here's the bottom. You can see the IBM type receptacle. Right there, I don't see the current rating. It looks like it says 15 amps. Clean the contacts on the TR relay, it doesn't look bad. I will change these two caps right here. This is for the standby operate. He has the resistor just hanging in free air. I will clean that up and tie everything nice. So that's about it. Also, oil the fan. I checked the SO239 connectors. They're tight on a PL2, PL259. So, hey, okay, I'll be back. Stay tuned. Forgot to show the back. It's early. Not all 100% awake yet. So, the um, looks like the 20 meter pi input coil has had some heating. Make sure it's okay. Sometimes people drive these really hard, you know, if the tubes are at the end of their life or something else is going on, they'll try to compensate by putting more drive into the amplifier from the uh, transceiver and they can end up damaging the mica caps or the coil. So uh, they can also saturate the ferrite and the permeability will change. So I'll check all that, make sure that's good. Looks like you added a variable cap to the 80 meter, I believe that's the, yeah, that's the 80 meter pi input coil. The input circuit, I will change the grid loading resistors and the caps in between the grid and ground. And as you can see, like I said in another video, one connection does nothing, it's a dummy connection. So they're just using that as a standoff over here on this other socket. So like I said, I will compress 
the clips and clean them really well. It's very important to have a really good connection between the grid pin and ground because it, only one pin on the tube is actually connected to the grid for that tube. So, so I'm going to get to work. You can see the connection right there. I also clean this switch with deoxic gold. That's awesome stuff. I don't know where my can is, but I will be back. Okay, I'm back with the completed Heathkit SP200 here. I'll go over everything I did. Already had the Harbach filter cap board kit in here. I changed the meter lamp bulb with the proper bulb. I spread the clips on the assembly here. And I put a thin layer of silicone on the assembly to help stop it from popping out. The clips do that, but that gives it some extra help there to stop it from ever popping out. I've seen it pop out before and then touch a high voltage point. So I took the outer nuts off on the meter connections. I snugged up the inner nut, the inner brass 3 8 nut, and then I added reverse connected diodes across the meter movement and put the outer nuts back on. I checked the contacts on the output rotary switch. I then cleaned it with deoxic gold, awesome stuff. I compressed the clips for the anode connections so they're nice and tight. I wound new parasitic suppressor assemblies with two watt carbon comp Allen Bradley resistors. new plate blocking capacitor snugged up on all the connections over here and also the screws that hold in the plate tune cap and the nuts on the side on the bottom side for the load uh, air variable capacitor I will show you the back I'll be right back okay so I got rid of that trimmer cap I put the proper cap in for the 80 meter coil, the 20 meter coil was missing the two caps, so I put in the proper value mica caps. I changed the grid loading resistors. I changed the mica cap from the grid to ground on each socket. I squeezed the clips for each socket so they get a nice strong connection to the pins on the tubes. I, put, I sprayed some deoxic gold in there and also on the pins of a dummy tube and I plugged it in and out three or four times to clean them really well. I got rid of the wood screws that were holding the input connector in and I used stainless steel screws with cap nuts on the other side. I'll show you that. The connector for the output is fine. He wanted to keep the IBM type connector. He said he's been using for over 10 years now so it's rated for 15 amps. It'll be okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and I'll show you the bottom. Okay, here's the bottom. I'll go over everything it did really quick here. So, I checked the resistors to make sure they're, they were within tolerance. I oiled the fan motor. That's good. I changed the TR relay with the proper type. There's the proper coil voltage, proper coil resistance. You have to have the proper coil resistance, otherwise the bias will be off. So, the old one, he must have hit it or something, whoever put the connector on in, because the contacts were like twisted hardcore, and they weren't making a good connection. I tried straightening them, but I was like, you know, it's not worth it, you know, for what another relay cost. Like, you know, so I swapped that out. It's all soldered nice. As you can see the screws and the cap nuts for the connector on the input side. I removed it, deburred the hole, so now it's flush against the chassis. He has a standby operate switch. The wiring was loose before and it was rubbing up against the high voltage board. Depending on what position it was in, it, it was touching up over here. So it's all zip tied. I soldered the wire to the resistor and put some heat shrink on it and zip tied so it's not loose anymore. So I also put deoxic gold on the multimeter switch here. So uh, I think that about covers it. So if you need an amplifier repaired, give me a call. 210-300-2000.
203-892-4119. That's 203-892-4119. My website is ampreparegui.com. That's ampreparegui.com. And I try to put as many videos on here as I can. So if you want a notification when a new one pops on, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you like the video. Appreciate it. Hey, take care. AmpReparegrad.com.